Hello everybody and welcome to a Cool Scratch Tutorials video. Today we are going to be going over part 5 of making ourselves a Scratch platformer and we are going to be looking at how to improve the graphics of my game and the detail of my game. The first part of this series is in the description below and attached to it is a playlist and if you haven't seen those I highly recommend you do as there's a lot of great stuff in there. So let's just jump into it. The first thing we want to do is go to our backdrop section over here. Let's go to the backdrops and we see we have our three different backdrop levels that we had earlier. I don't really like some of these and I want them to be different, more like a video game itself. So what I've searched up here is pixel art nature. I kind of want a pixel art, I don't want it to be too complicated, but still like a video game. So I, I see this right here and I kind of like it. So what I want to do is uh, right click on it and I want to save image. I'm going to save it to my desktop. I'm just going to save it as background one. So I just saved it and you can see it popped here. And I'm going to find three different ones for my game. Let's see which ones will fit the best. Oh, I like this one. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to save the image. I'm going to save it as background 2. And we can see it appears down here. And I like this one too. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I have my three different backgrounds and I have them downloaded. So I'm going to go back to scratch here and I'm going to just replace them. I'm going to go to upload backdrop and you can see I'm in my desktop folder and all three of them appear right here. So I'm going to click on one, I'm going to shift and I'm going to have three selected and I'm going to open all three of them. We can see all three of them opened here, but we the problem is is that they're all not the same size. So what we want to do is we're going to try and select every part of this and we're going to try to make it just a, we're going to make it bigger until it fits the right size. So we can see we just scaled that up. So I'm going to do the same. For right here, I'm going to select the part I want. I'm going to select all of it and I'm going to bring it up and bring it to the parts I want like that. I'm going to go to the third section. I'm going to select that. We can see it's pretty small, but with the magic of scaling things up, it is going to fit quite nicely. I accidentally deselected it there, so I'm going to reselect it. And there we go. So we have three of our backdrops looking much, much better. Now what we want to do is to go into our code and actually change it so it switches to these three backdrops and not these three. So we can see we have the one green flag clicked and that's the very beginning. So we can leave that be, but begin is our very first one. So what we want to do is change this to backdrop background one. Message one is our second one. So let's change it to backdrop two. And message two, we can see is the third backdrop. So let's change it to backdrop background three. So if we press play on our game, we can see we have successfully transferred the images off the web into our very own game and look at how much better this is looking. Wow. Now that we have incorporated all of the different backgrounds, what we want to do is we want to upgrade our play button. So I've pulled it up here and we can see it's very simple and just like sort of low quality. So what I've done, I've gone and searched up a start button. It's very important when you look for start buttons to make sure it's transparent. Otherwise, there will be a very bad block outline of it and you don't want that. So you just use the keyword transparent and we want to see not the ones with the boxes in the back because those are fake. We want to see ones with a white background and then when we uh, click on it, if it's still a white background and not the checkers like here, then we can't use it. So I'm going to keep on scrolling till I find one I like. Ooh, like this one. And we can see it's white on the background, 
but we have the checkerboard pattern on the back. So this is a perfect image for us to use. So I'm going to save the image as clay button. I'm going to save that. You can see it appears down here. And let's go back to our code. We're going to go to choose a costume when we've selected our button over here. And we are going to go to upload costume. And we can see it appeared on my desktop. And if we scroll and find it, we can look for play button and it's right here. So let's click open. And we can see it's a bit big for our screen. So I'm going to scroll out a bit. And if we press play, we can see that is very, very big on our screen. So let's just select it and let's bring it down. We can see we still have the checkerboard pattern here, which is super helpful. And that is why it's super important to pick uh, the right background. So I'm dragging it to the center of the screen. So it's the same. We can see it increases size when we hover over it because we created that script last time when we created our title screen. So we've improved our start button. We've improved our backgrounds just like that. I really do hope you enjoyed this super simple way to improve the graphics of your game. And if you learned something new or enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.